to be tough. Then you should get to know me. I'll teach you other stuff. I'm Madeline, I'm Madeline. I may be very small. I'm Madeline, I'm Madeline, but inside I'm tall. She may be teeny tiny, tip and tip and teeth, but that has never stopped her from being pretty neat. In an old house in Paris that was covered with vines, lived 12 little girls in two straight lines. They left the house at half past nine in two straight lines. Or shine. These owns those. <gasps> the smallest one was Madeline. On a windy day in early fall, Miss Clavel said, Let us not go outside at all. Oh, we came not to stay inside. See you play, Miss Clavel? But the girls were set to go to the zoo, so they wrapped up in scarves, red, green, and blue, and headed down the avenue. The wind was blowing everywhere. It blew them to the polar bear. And to the tiger turning blue, Madeline could only say, Achoo! Too sweet, my darlings. We must go home. The girls lined up, all set to go, when Chloe exclaimed, Where is my chapeau? We must find it. Where could it be? They searched high and they searched low. Where the hat had gone, they did not know. We must count it lost. I am sorry, Chloe. Now, allons-y. But Chloe's cap was only the start. More and more things began to depart. My shoes! Where have they gone? <laughs> My brand new mittens! Have you seen them, Pepito? Your very handsome red ones? My sock! It is gone! Who took it? Just as Miss Clavel had feared, so many things have disappeared. Oh, oh! Really, little girls, you are getting so absent-minded. Oh, my goat! It was here yesterday. Where could it be? <laughs> Do not laugh, mes petites. How could this occur? But the answer to that was left unsaid. So they sat down and broke their bread. We love our bread. We love our butter. But most of and brushed their teeth and went to bed. Bon oui, little girls. I hope you sleep well. Bon oui, dear Miss Clavel. Then Miss Clavel turned out the light. 
But tonight, there was no pillow fight, for the little girls had a terrible fright. What is that? <gasps> what is that? <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> it is only Madeline. It is one of her tricks. Excuse me, Danielle, but how can that be me when I am right here next to you? <gasps> it is Miss Clavel. Little girls, I heard a strange, strange noise. We oh, will also see oh, what so can I be? Shh, shh, shh. There it is again, mes petites. It is coming from the attic. We must go and see. Eleven little girls all hid in fright, afraid to find the awful sight that made the creaky noise that night. No, not me. No, no. I will not go up there. But Miss Clavel and Madeline refused to scare. They hurried off to find the noise upstairs. The attic was a scary place. They tiptoed in with solemn grace. And when they entered, they cried. Eek! Because something in the room went creak. Do you hear it? Regarde, something is there. Oh, it is just the window screen. Then Madeline's eyes grew wide with fright, for someone had been there that night. Miss Clavel, quick, look here. Our old winter clothing has all disappeared. Shh. Look, look. Voila, there he is. Miss Clavel held Madeline very tight as the rubber slipped away that night. Miss Clavel called Detective Moreau. He searched the house both high and low. But in the end, he had to leave without a clue about the thief. Hmm. No one in the house slept well. Not the girls, the dog, or Miss Clever. The next morning, as they were awaking, the little girls were still a-shaking. Mes amis, do not stand there quaking. We must catch the thief. But Madeline, what can we do? Mais oui. We are only small girls. He is a very big thief. I will catch Monsieur Thief. But how? I know exactly what to do. I will follow every clue. He stole my hat. He stole my glove. He stole my coat, the one I love. Look out, my friends, he's back for more. His shadow's coming through the door. My scarf, he stole my shoe. He stole my earmuffs, they were new. Look at my friends, he's back for more. His shadow's coming through the door. Call the captain, call the chief. I will catch that awful thief. I will follow every clue. Till we capture you. No. from Guy the Mouse. Look up, my friends, he's back for more. His shadow's coming through the door. Call the captain, call the chief. We will catch that awful thief. We will follow every clue. Do we capture you? No, we won't. But Madeline, what will you do first? Hmm, Pepito admired my missing mittens. I wonder. Because Pepito liked Madeline's mittens, he was now under suspicion. 
This is just the sort of bad joke Papito might play. It's my line. Wait, that's right. Bonjour. May I speak with Papito still for play? But Madeline was in for a surprise when she saw the strange hat Pepito had devised. I do not believe my eyes. What is that thing on your head? I missed the bad hat. Someone has taken it. Oh, oh no. no! Someone has taken the bad hat? This thief has no taste. Not just the bad hats. We have lost coats and mittens and scarves and boots. <gasps> Have you been losing things, too? Excusez-moi, Pepito. I hate to admit it, but I suspected you. There wasn't any time to waste to catch the thief with the bad taste. Do you care to join us, Pepito? Claro! Of course I do! And so began their investigation, starting with a neighborhood interrogation. Madeline asked, Have you lost anything at all? Anything that is large or small? Then she replied, my glove, my shawl. Bonjour, monsieur. Have you lost anything in the last few days? The man said, my belt, my vest, and my best berets. Things were missing from every block, from the horse's shoes to the milkman's socks. Madeline thought and thought about the thief. She had been wrong hmm. in her belief. <gasps> Madeline, what is wrong? Oh, Pepito, I have made a terrible mistake. Now I know it really happened. Huh? She rushed in and rang Danton 63. Detective Moreau, come quickly. Oui, oui. Madeline explained her miscalculation and the need for a new explanation. So many burglaries can't be the work of one thief, but many thieves, Detective Moreau. Ten, twenty, maybe even forty. Oui, certainement. That explains it. This is where the thieves have struck. There were marks on buildings and marks <gasps> on docks. It looked like the map had chicken pox. Detective Moreau was so very pleased, he made Madeline and Pepito his deputies. And so together they went around, following clues, till the thieves were found. Hmm. <gasps> they talked to people all over the city, from the Eiffel Tower to streets less pretty. They came so close, but the thieves got away. They began to lose their hope that day. They went up and down and all around. And still the mystery did confound. These terrible thieves must be run aground. They walked all day till it was dark, and then they reached a little park. Let us sit down and think what to do. This is dreadful. We have run out of clues. With no clues left, what could they do? Their search for robbers was, alas, all through. <gasps> but when things had reached their very worst, Madeline was the one who saw it first. Pepito, Detective Moreau, look! I cannot believe what I see! It is the bad hat! To which Pepito replied, It is true, there is no other. Oh, Detective Moreau, this is splendid! Oh, oh, oui, oui! Perhaps at last we will catch one of the thieves! to wear Pepito's bad hat. Pepito? Who is Pepito? To which Pepito replied, I am Pepito, you bad bandito. Your life as a thief is now finito. But I am not a thief. Then why are you wearing his bad hat? This is his bad hat? I will gladly give it back. 
Voilà. Who are you? Where do you live? My home? This pelk? This bench? This limb? Wherever I happen to be right now. Where did you get the bad hat? On the hat tree, of course, where I will find a nazel. Wait, wait, come back! We must follow her. Though the girl was very little, she was faster than a fiddle. Oh. It was late and getting dark as they followed the girl deep into the park. They were just about to end their spree when they came upon a great big tree. Regarde, Pepito, regarde! On one branch were coats and mittens, scarves and tights and other knittens. There were capes and gloves and sweaters. Some were old and some much better. Look! So many clothes! This hat, this is a good hat. But who could have brought all these clothes together? I do not know. But if we wait, I bet we will find out. Soon the threesome were quite alone. The autumn wind began to move. <gasps> the giant trees began to groan, and all felt fears they never known. I want to go home! <laughs> there is nothing to fear, my boy. Just a little lightning. <laughs> of course we cannot leave, Pepito. Not until we've caught the 40 thieves. <laughs> the night grew long, the night grew frightening. There was rain and hail and so much lightning. But all of it could not compare to what came flying through the air. Pepito! Detective Moreau! Look up there! That is it! I'm off to bed! We must run away while we can! Let me go, por favor! Wait, Pepito! Listen! Pepito listened, then let out a cry. It is a bird! The sly magpie! And Madeline cried, my word, my word, for her 40 feet were only birds. You birds only wanted to help the needy. You are really heroes. They danced with the birds for almost an hour, then headed for home in a pretty snow shower. Madeline, I was so worried. Now come inside where it is warm. <laughs> Miss Clavel, there was no need for worry. I have a message for you from the 40 thieves. We all have clothes in our closets we do not wear. Let us give them to people who can use them. So all over the neighborhood, in houses, in stores, people gathered up old clothing, their gifts for the poor. picked up the clothing and flew away.
Then the birds took Madeline on a special flight. <laughs> they climbed and soared to incredible heights, and Madeline saw the most wonderful sights. Oh, Madeline, please be careful. <laughs> The girls went home and broke their bread. We love our bread, we love our butter, but most of all, we love each other. And brushed their teeth and went to bed. And Miss Clavel said, Sweet dreams, sleep tight. I do not expect the thieves tonight. Now we can have a thief! They ran back and forth upon the floor. And that's all there is. There isn't anymore. Oh.